Hello and welcome to this video on Comp3218 Game Design and Development at the University of Southampton. Uh, once again we're going to be looking at some of the coursework submissions from our students. My name is Tom Blount, I am one of the course lecturers, and today I am joined by... Hi, I'm Callum, I'm one of the uh, demonstrators on the course. Excellent, so Callum do you want to tell us a little bit about what we asked the students to do for this coursework? Uh, yeah, so for this one, um, they were asked to design a game that had a strong core dynamic uh, and that had good tutorialization of its mechanics. Okay, fantastic. Let's jump right in. All right, and this game is Gilded. So again, so nice little title screen. Um, mm. Like sim simple, but it does the job. Uh, let's, let's jump in. Yeah, just got like a tiny bit of texture in the back, which is nice. Hex map. I was not expecting mm. a hex map. I don't know why. So explore the map with the movement keys. Already, that's kind of interesting because how how does that work? Oh, right. It's just scroll the map, not move across the map. Otherwise, I was going to say how how does that work? Four keys, right. six directions. Um, delete the rundown <laughs> camp. Okay, so so first thing in the I tutorial, see. it tells us to move, and every time I pressed a button, it gave us a little tick, so that to um, and then hair, and then once we'd scrolled around properly, it disappeared, and we're on to the next step. So already good steps. Mm. It's given us a picture of the thing we have to delete. So I'm guessing. Yep. So yeah, right click to delete this. <laughs> That's given us some resources. Nice. This Ooh, is a nice little animation there. Ah, this is... I'm very surprised by this. We don't often get these kind of strategy games for this coursework, so I'm excited yeah. to see how this plays out. I don't remember seeing ever seeing anything like this. Uh, so at lumberyard, blah blah blah. Place this next to a forest. Okay, so build thing to get wood, I assume. Trees or lumber. So these symbols aren't hugely differentiable but you know that's okay oh right yeah so it does look like wood and trees are slightly different i'm assuming that's wood and this is like planks or something mm. like but anyway getting ahead of ourselves so yeah. wood paper and a villager oh no it costs us a villager oh and it needs to be near trees or it gives us trees oh that's what that symbol means okay yeah there we go right yeah. Uh, so I think that there was meant to be a tile there then, but we couldn't quite see it. So okay, so we've got this, place it by the forest, any particular forest, or I yeah, I'll, I'll put it over here I guess. Uh, we've unlocked a dirt path, connects factory. Ah, so it was planks. See I've played strategy games before. <laughs> uh, one villager per full path. So I, so I assume the villager builds it, but they don't necessarily have to run it. I guess. Select the dirt path from your thing. Connect. Drain. This is surprisingly complex for. Uh... Yeah, paths are directional. Ooh. Uh. Interesting. Okay, so. Okay, didn't mean to do oh, that. No. Didn't mean to do that either. Ooh. Uh, oh, I have to start at the... Okay, so even though it's spelled out really, really clear f clearly for me, I didn't I didn't get that. Um, yeah, I think it's because you've got that dirt path connected to the central settlement. I think it, that kind of... To yeah. me, that implied that you should be starting there, but... Well, to me, it's because my presumably my villagers are in the camp, so they have to get there to build it. Yeah. So the fact that the path is directional is a bit odd. But I, c I can see why they've done it, and in that case, I guess it makes sense because stuff is only ever going to come from the lumber yard to the main camp. So okay, fine. Yeah. So let's see if I. There we go. Look at that. Hey. Uh, upgrade your village to unlock new factories and villages with your generated resources. So I can upgrade this for sixteen wood. Ooh, it looks like a train station. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, hover over a dirt path and press E to open settings. Increase the Ooh. speed of paths and factories with extra villagers. Processing. All oh, right, so I think this is going for like a kind of so settler style thing where the villagers are supposed to be on the path moving stuff back and forth. Right. So if I say two, there'll be two villagers, I guess, passing stuff along here. Mm. Okay. It's a shame there's no kind of visual like, representation of that. I was going to say, we absolutely need like meeples or something, right? Like mm. standing on the path to show us that it's working. 
Yeah. But okay, fine. Um, it's E, right? So we can't. Oh, it's because we've only got two villagers, I right. think. Oh, wait, because if you increase it, if you if you go back onto the path, sorry, if you increase it, the villager count in the top right goes down. Yeah, because we're assigning our free villagers to this. But you can't... Oh, right, there's two max. That's I guess the villager workers out of two. Yeah. I so... see. Okay, right. wow, we've got a lot of wood <laughs> suddenly. I was like, yeah. what, what are we... So like, the tutorial feels like it's just sort of stopped, which is a bit of a shame. Because uh, yeah. I'm, so um, I'm going to assume that I just... Go to the factory as well. What's this button? I don't even know what this button does. So Can you inc oh. add villagers to the factory? The lumber yard, yeah. sorry. So we can up to 10. that's what it was telling me to do. Oh, right, okay. Or perhaps we have no? to upgrade this to get more factory? There we go. Ah, oh, there we go, okay. Uh, so perhaps like just a little something in like the top left or say to say your next task is to do this. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we've got a sawmill, so we're going to make logs into planks. This makes the wood we've gathered into planks, which are presumably important. Delete. Delete your current dirt paths. Okay. Place the sawmill between, so it's going to go. All right. So you're building like a production line type thing. Okay. Place the sawmill between the two, so we'll put them, I guess, there. And then from here to here, and from here to here, keep gathering more resources to continue upgrading your village if you need it. Oh, that's the manual. That's kind of cute. They've included. Yeah. So they've got. It's an odd choice of icon, but it's nice that you've got. You can essentially go back through the tutorial notes. Uh, I've got a compactor now. Reduce the so, so it goes from planks to, let's say, compressed planks. I think that was oh paper. paper. Uh, that was. Yeah. It's not the clearest icon for it. Yeah. Um, but that what, does at least make sense. You know, you're working with like a limited set of um, uh, icons. Yeah. So here's the thing. Am I? Are you able to like branch these? Could you have the sawmill sending some stuff into town and some to the paper factory? That's exactly what I was just thinking. Uh, so that needs two planks and a villager. Okay. So let's see if. Yeah, that started going up. Excellent. Okay, so we can do that. So in which case, can I also put a compactor? I don't know. Here. And then drag a path from here to here, and here to here. So in theory, all three of these should go up. I think because it requires... But I think, yeah. So that's got... Does the, uh, does, sorry, does the um, paper mill have anything stored? If you mouse over it? Uh, so yeah, the comp compactor. No. Stored resources, stored resources. No. So maybe, because it takes three planks to make, sorry, three wood to make a plank, maybe it's just going to take a while for it to... I don't know if we'll get all of our stuff back from this, but it's kind of odd that the lumber yard requires paper to make. Yeah. Um, I mean, I guess we started with paper, but... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, that, and then that, and then we'll do mm. this to this this to this. I've just realised I'm getting too uh, too into just playing this game. We should start talking about the mark scheme. Yeah, wow, sorry. Uh, um, okay. First category is the overall quality and within that, presentation. Um, before getting into the specifics, I think the presentation is mostly pretty good. Yes, sorry, I immediately got distracted again. Um, okay, um, I will keep talking then. So Please do. Um, yeah, so... A good on the mark scheme is the key information is shown clearly, there are consistent and appealing graphics, and there is... Nope, I'm reading the wrong one. Wow. Key information is shown clearly, graphics are consistent, and there is appropriate use of audio effects and or music. Um, so, is there any audio? There is. There's some lovely sort of, I guess, lilting medievalish music. I'm gonna call it. Um, there's some noises when we're dragging, um, 
what do you call them, paths and buildings and stuff around. Other than that, not a huge amount, but otherwise, yeah. So I think certainly the visuals are very consistent and appealing. Mm -hmm. I'm deliberately not clicking through this so I don't get uh, immediately distracted again. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, key information is definitely shown. So we've got our available resources, we've got our current yeah. resources. It would be nice if we could see, like you say, where villagers are assigned. So, if, so for like example, you can find all the information you need, but it's maybe not as clear as it could be. Yeah. So if we had, for example, a villager like a villager icon here and here, yeah, or whatever. Um, it's also not, um, for instance, well, if you if you open up the manual again. And go to the sawmill. That's the lumberyard. Sorry, it's not clear where the actual like. Oh, there is a tile there. Oh yeah. Um, so on the lumberyard, it's not clear um, like what the radius of that is. Like if I you think it has to be next to one tree, but I think it has to be if you next, put to it a... next to multiple forest tiles, is that better? Uh, I see. Well, it's not. It's not clear the exact behavior of everything, but mostly, like you understand what's happening. And it's reasonably clear what you need to do. Um, and in particular, you know, having those little uh, demonstrations of the icons, that, that's nice. Um, uh, okay, so... So I think I think we can comfortably consists. say that it's... I, I would say so, absolutely. Yeah. Like, the water maybe looks a bit odd, but other, you know mind yeah. quibbles. Every, otherwise everything else looks really really nice. Um, so and I know which asset pack they've used for this as well and it's a good one. Um, oh okay. Uh, so yeah I think we can comfortably say it's a good. Do we think it's an excellent? Okay. So excellent would be the, the key information is shown clearly. There is consistent and appealing graphics and good use of audio. Um, so I would say it probably doesn't quite reach excellent. Again, this may be down to my personal preferences, but I think that there are some points where, like, there are some minor things with the graphics where, like, for instance, you've got there the path, the kind of dirt path tile appears on top of the bridge, yeah, which looks a bit strange. Um, and, you know, as you said, the water does look a little bit on there's like small I, edge cases but where I think like very small things I think we can comfortably say that it's like a, a very at the very least between good and excellent yes I think that, that definitely counts I think that's the thing I think I would say it was excellent if there was maybe like if we could see where our villagers were assigned easier yeah um it's just you know so um uh, so I'm going to point to a uh, Factorio as an example of this. That has like a different. It has a button that will show, like it will put the resource symbol over each of the um, appropriate right, buildings. Right. Yeah. And something like that in like a sort of production chain game like this would be or, really really useful. I guess a slightly more direct comparison would be like in the Civilization games. There's a button you can toggle that shows you yeah, the exactly. resource yield of every tile. So something like that, um, but otherwise, I think yeah. I think it's very very good. So I think we put it between yeah. good and excellent, and we, we okay. move on. <laughs> um, yes. So gameplay. Gameplay. Um, um. Yeah, controls are. So the paths took me a little bit of understanding, but yeah. that was because I wasn't reading the tutorial properly. Otherwise, mm. it was super good. Um, but now that you've been putting down paths for quite a while. Um, <laughs> yeah, they seem totally smooth usable. and usable. Yeah. So it's not always obvious when I if I click a slot why I can't put something down. So again, maybe that ties back into the information design as well. But things like, for yeah. example, um, if I click on this, just nothing happens. Uh, obviously, if I look at it right. properly, I can see it's because I don't have enough bricks. But it'd be mm -hmm. nice if, for example, the, the bricks thing was red when I moused over it yeah. or when I clicked on it. Um, it flashed, or you know, something like that, just to indicate it. But otherwise, I would say the controls are um, very good. I mean, there's there's not a lot in the way of controls. There's moving around and placing stuff, and it's just you can place different types of stuff. But otherwise, yeah, that that works really mm. nicely. The gameplay yeah, is the fact that you delete stuff by right clicking on it. Um, although that that's a very small thing, but uh, it, it's I think it's quite a big advantage because there's a lot of these types of games where the deletion is you have to go and find a separate tool which can get kind of annoying if you're trying to like rapidly 
change things. Yeah, I agree. So that's a nice touch. Um, so for a good for this, um, they need a set of complementary mechanics, smooth usable controls, and that lead to meaningful play. Um, yeah. So I think, well, we've spoken about the controls already, but I think there definitely seems to be meaningful play. Um, actually, maybe not. <laughs> I, so that I would say there's definitely meaningful play. Again, there may be a sort of, not a problem, but perhaps not the risks and rewards aren't as obvious as they could be. There, yeah, you could make the argument that, for example, do I put all of my workers on paths and try and speed things up that way, or do I make more lumber yards mm. and then more paths going from them, each with one worker? So there is that sort of balancing act of how how guess... how do I want to balance my different resources? The main issue with that in terms of meaningful play is that uh, because it's all to do with the rate of resource production, like there is definitely an optimal way to do it. Like there is one best way to solve that problem, um, which might be dependent on the map. Like maybe uh, for certain map setups with distributions of resources and distances, that changes. But for a given map, there will be an optimal way to position things, which arguably works against the meaningful play arguably but also you know that's like saying factorio doesn't have meaningful play like part of the the meaningful play is finding that optimal balance of things yeah no okay that's that's a good point i just noticed we've we've gone from like a tiny village to like a uh, a little sort of military industrial complex over here yeah, the choice, the upgrade progression of that is a little bit odd. So I noticed at one point it went from like a medieval castle to a suburban home. Again, limited asset which, set, right? <laughs> yeah, like and it's like they're it's definitely fair enough. Like it changes, that's fine. You can and, definitely uh, see the progression from it. Yes, like as um, we're advancing in technology, we were advancing in technology. That's fine. Um, but yeah, uh, back to the meaningful play. Yes, I yeah, I would say it definitely meaningful play. Okay, so. Uh, the question is, does it get up to excellent? So that would require a wide set of complementary mechanics, uh, intuitive and smooth controls, and enjoyable and meaningful play. So going up to wide, intuitive, and enjoyable. So it's, it's interesting because, like, does are all of, yeah yeah. What am I trying to say? I was going to say you could argue that there's one mechanic, and that is harvest resource turn into other resource. And does it count to have loads and loads of different resources and loads of different intermediary products? Do they count as a wider set of mechanics? And I think they definitely do, because you've got all of the different buildings so, and stuff like that that are required. I don't to... think it's so much that the separate resources count as different mechanics, but I think that rather than having just resource goes to settlement, like resource goes to intermediary workshop, which then maybe branches off into other things, like that is the separate mechanic. Yeah. The ability to chain things and branch and merge stuff. Okay, so... Um, I would say that I think the directional paths, while why, like, I understand why they've done them, it feels... that feels a bit unintuitive. Like, if they were conveyor belts, um, yeah. then being directional would make sense, but paths, it kind of... The like, metaphor wait, breaks why down is a it one bit. way? Um... And ultimately, it's because they only need to go one way. Yeah. Um, but you're right. The metaphor is a bit odd. Um, another thing I was going to say is sort of the the interplay between the different things. So I've noticed, for example, that to build a a forge, I need paper mm. and bricks, but no wood or planks. Right. So I'm but actually wondering. I guess wondering... paper is a result of the wood and the planks. So that is true. But does that mean I don't actually need this whole production chain that I've got here to create the planks anymore? You do have a lot of planks in storage. So I think I get really. Maybe they're not being used. So now I freed up some of my villagers, so maybe I get them on these paths instead. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And I guess you can argue that that's oh, uh, so many maybe spare part of the decision making, right? Like maybe at some point a resource becomes obsolete, so then you. Again, uh, you, you have shuffle to stuff notice around. that and decide to rearrange your Make pipelines. it more efficient again, right? Yeah. Uh, cool. So I've just noticed I've got so many spare villages. So, also speaking of mechanics, assigning villages to locations and stuff. Different different mechanic. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so I 
actually am tempted to say, yeah, maybe it hits excellent. Um, yeah, I think it definitely fits with enjoyable, given how uh, distracted you're getting with this. I, I do really like these sorts of games, but you're right. I would say that this yeah. is very enjoyable gameplay. Okay, so um, it fits excellent. Um, I don't think it's going to reach prize worthy. Yeah, I think um, that's probably fair. So, okay, so we mark this one down as excellent, and then again, we've gone bogged down again because I, I keep getting distracted with playing. <laughs> yes. um, but so, bugs. bugs. Haven't noticed any bugs. It's uh, definitely reasonably complex. Yeah. So I, I th I'm happy to basically jump straight to uh, excellent. Oh, well, I guess Ooh. earlier um, we established that you could have the parts branch, um, but then we were having issues getting the sawmill to output planks to both the base and the paper mill. So I... that might have been a bug. So this is the thing. Is it a bug? Or is it, like, is it a bug? Is it just poor information design? Or is it actually a case of it was working as intended, it's just really slow if you split the split the flow of lumber that much, say? Mm. Um, so yeah. I So I don't think we can call that a bug. Well, to be fair, the paper does go up. Yeah. Well, it's going up at a reasonable rate. What happens if you draw then, another path off of So the, it's, it's going up at a reasonable sword. rate now, because I've just quadrupled the amount of workers in each of these buildings. Okay. So um, if you if you split it off with the path, uh, does that does it break it or does it just slow it down? I, I don't want to find out. I don't want to break my <laughs> lovely paths. Um, <laughs> you uh, can put it back later. So here, so for example, if I so are we still going to get paper? And again, this might be working as intended because now they're just prioritizing this path so instead of this I one. I think what it. Is the paper mill getting any additional stored wood? It's not. No. But again, don't think that's a bug. I think, oops, damn it. Oh no, uh, your I lovely think, compactor. I know. I think that's just a case of it's not obvious. Hmm. It might just be that only, say, the, 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 the raw material production places can um, maybe... Or maybe you... Mm, I don't know. But okay, so I I say we say there's there's like no, I've not noticed any bugs or nothing that we can concretely okay. say this is a bug that has disrupted the experience. So yeah, okay, so that would then put it at least at excellent, which is game is playable and is reasonably complex, and there are no obvious bugs. Um, so then the question is, do you think that it's playable and of higher complexity? I. I'm not sure. I don't think so, just from mm. the components we've got at the minute, at least. They're all... Uh, for, so, for example, I don't know, something that might reach that sort of additional level of complexity is different types of resources that combine together to make other things and things like that. Yeah. I, so I think it right now it's just one thing in, one thing out. Maybe that will change later, so maybe we'll come back to it. But I would say that is what would push it maybe sort of above an excellent. But even even then, it's still a it's relatively definitely excellent. It's, though. Yes, it's definitely excellent. Um, so let's look at whether they fulfilled the brief. Okay. Um, so the first half of the brief is the um, level design. Uh, so for good, we need a sensible level design that demonstrates a number of mechanics with good pacing and some clear goals, risks, and rewards. And. I think for level design, they've definitely got that. Um, they've got the different resources, they're in different places. You've got these little uh, bridges over the river, which so you know, to get to the stone, they need you need to learn how the um, bridges work. So yeah, I, I had just realized that, oh, I can't actually put down another mine up here because this bridge is already taken up. Hmm. So it is kind of interesting. So I wonder... Like if you put that um, resource, uh, the forge, I think it is. If you put that before the bridge, could you have multiple have parts multiple going into the forge into and then have? Yeah. Let's try it. Um, so, so yeah. In terms of the the level design, on the face of it, it's a relatively simple. You know, it's just a hex grid of stuff. Yeah. But even just little things about where they've put the resources and things like that, and. Mm. 
I guess we look at level design in this case in terms of sort of the progression of, I mean, I guess the levels of resources, if you like. So we move from the, the simple chain to the complex chain and the sort of the chain of upgrades as well. It's all part of the, the structure of the level. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay. So, and it's got that good pacing because, you know, at the start, you've just got, here's some wood. Um, and then, you know, you get more and more stuff. And then when you move over across, it throws a little bit more stuff at you at once. Um, and I mean, the goal is clear, I guess with the risk and rewards, this comes back to what we said earlier about that's the risk and rewards is like to do with the space management, essentially. Yeah. Um, also, I, I just looked at this, so mm. this mine's got two workers and produces in two seconds. This mine has got four workers and produces in three workers, so you get diminishing returns as well. Which again oh, ties into that. So it's actually better to have more individual mines, so it's how do you place them, how do you connect them. That's quite yeah. good, I like that. Yeah. I wonder if... Um... And again, this would be quite a lot of extra work to do that. Let, let's uh, not, get, if, let's uh... not get into hypotheticals, let's have a look yeah, at the mark okay. scheme. So, um, I think we're pretty happy it's good. Um, so excellent would then be a sophisticated level design that demonstrates a wide range of mechanics with good, varied pacing and balanced goals, risks and rewards. Um, I would be tempted to say that it probably gets that. Possibly between the two. So again, it's sort of how do we feel about the complexity of these different um, interacting components and mechanics? Yeah, I guess... Um, I think if I was to argue against it, it would be that in terms of the like worker placement mechanic, that's not done through level design so much. True. Um, but the whole like the branching and chaining of... Uh, I guess the, the progression of building does. is... And Ooh. the progression of buildings is not as complex as it could have been. So again, like for, if, yeah. for example, a, a forge needed, you know, wood to power the forge and stone for mm. it, then how do we get the wood from over here to over here suddenly becomes more interesting. So yeah, perhaps, mm. perhaps just above a good for the level design. Yeah. Um, so before we move on, uh, I have just noticed that you've got those two buildings on either side of the river where one of them has the grass on the dirty side and the dirt on the grass side, which arguably is a bug, but uh, I don't know. It's I don't a, think that that might that again is um, it's not a bug. It's just they've made the assumption that true. this is going to be on this side and this is going to be on this side. Like yeah, again, if they want if like something to boost them up even into the sort of higher side of the presentation would be only placing the sprite rather than the tile. Yeah. But, you know. And I guess for the building site, at least, you could definitely argue that that should be dirtier. <laughs> Again, let's not um, get too hung up on okay. that. Let's stick with what Tutorial we're design. Um, so yeah, tutorials. Are, I really, really like the tutorial. I, I'm, yeah. actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna quit out of this, and then we can uh, play through it and have a look at the, the full tutorial itself. Uh, so I'm gonna yes. ramble for a minute while it reloads, and then... Yeah, so... Uh, if okay. we go to, uh, well, while we're waiting for that, uh, so a good on this is that it's a mostly integrated tutorial that communicates most goals, risks, and rewards through level design, and that introduces information and mechanics in a logical way that fits with what has gone before. And I think, yeah, they, e they e easily that. Um, so one thing that uh, I want to mention is, so obviously with this one, there's a lot of presenting a text box of information, um, which usually we complain about but in this sort of game like there's not much else there's not really any other ways you can do that right so that you couldn't communicate all of these different mechanics through purely level design alone but yeah. here's the thing we complain about text when it's just here's a big wall of text now off you go mm. here we get a bit of text and then we interact with the level and the gameplay so like here for example i'd actually forgotten about this like before we build anything we first learn to destroy stuff and it's like here's here's a thing that will be in your way destroy yeah. it. Yeah. And then different bits of the UI unlock. So Yeah, that's a good point. The UI gradually becoming more complicated is another like good point there. So if we had seventeen different resources that all said zero for most of the game, that would be you know, poor, yeah. poor poor tutorialization. Whereas here, 
it only shows up as we actually gather it. Mm. Ah, the tile doesn't show up on this one. It does in the... Yeah. So slightly odd, but again, weird graphical glitch, fine. Um, but um, otherwise, the tutorial is good. It clearly tells us exactly what each of these different tiles is. It walks us through yeah. building it. It specifically highlights this bit of the UI to say, click on this. Yeah. So uh, we're happy it's a good. So for excellent, um, it would be an integrated tutorial that communicates goals, risks, and rewards through level design, that introduces information and mechanics in a logical way that builds on what's gone before. I think quite literally. And <laughs> yeah, it's um, very much builds on um, what has gone before. Like, it's not just say that they show you, here's some wood, and now you can go get stone on the other side of the map. It's, here's some wood, the wood is used to produce other things. You need to link them using these paths you've already built. Um, so I would argue that it that this is an excellent tutorial. Yeah, absolutely. So um, another thing, I guess, that's just a small bit of polish that I've noticed is these things also Ooh. have keybinds. Oh, do they? Yeah, so I can just press one or two or three to select oh, yeah. to place it. Again, like really small that's detail, nice. but adds a really nice bit of polish. Oh, and actually, while we're talking about it, these tooltips like, are yes. really good. Because they already have that information in the... Um glossary thing so you could you could easily say like ah if they want to know what it is they can look it up but having that tooltip um and the fact that when you mouse over buildings it tells you gives you a brief summary of their current production like that's um that's very good yeah so they've got excellent in the tutorial um so what were prize they worthy prize worthy is a fully integrated tutorial that successfully communicates goals, risks, and rewards through level design, and that introduces information and mechanics in a novel yet logical way that builds on and reinterprets what has gone before. Mm, so um, I, I don't. This think is getting quite... onto the point where I'm not certain exactly what is needed for this, so I'll have to uh, so defer I, to you. So, for example, I would say that um, uh, I had a point I was going to make, and I've already forgotten it because I was too busy thinking about my production chains. Um, so even just looking at the goals, risks, and rewards thing, for example, so we've sort yeah. of said that it's all about you know placement of space and how we assign the workers and things. So it tells us yeah. that we can assign workers, but it doesn't necessarily give us that information of, like, oh, there are going to be diminishing returns or things like that, mm. concretely. But otherwise, I, guess... I think we can say that it's firmly in the excellent. Yeah, so like... Again, with the um, the risks and rewards, like the inclusion of those bridges, the, the fact that you can't build your own bridges, that is, like, it uses the level design to show you, like, yeah, you've got to think about your space. Yeah. Uh, but okay, I so think, let's, let's I think the on. worker placement would have become more important if there was some kind of, like, cost yeah. over time. Like, if you needed, say, a minimum amount of wood per building for upkeep. Yes. Um, then you'd have to kind I, of balance. Again, let's not get bogged down in hypotheticals. We uh, yes, we, we need to talk about the core dynamic. So what did they say their right. core dynamic was? Um, sorry, just uh, where, where were we putting the uh, level tutorial oh, design? I think we said excellent, yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, so core dynamic. They said, this is gilded, so they believe that the core dynamic... Uh, wait. Okay, the way they've worded this is a lot strange. So they've said that building is their core dynamic. Okay, so not one of the ones that um, we talked about in the course lectures. Uh, obviously that's a particular set of them and it doesn't always encompass all things. So why, why have they justified creating this sort of new core dynamic and how do they think their mechanics are? Um, so they, they said that they think it's the core because it's impossible to progress without building um the various parts um so i and... sorry <laughs> so i okay so i i understand where they're coming from the the key the fundamental part is sort of building but it's we're not really building we're creating buildings but like yeah when you say building as a dynamic i would think of something like for example minecraft where it's all about yes. actually building up a structure or something like that I, in a way we're building up sort of chains but that yeah, leads so me on to my... say that um like optimizing the placement and build it of a number of buildings and the path layout um 
is it is you know how that you improve so, so it might be that they mean building in sense of building your like building network. up supply chains and, th and that's the thing if i was going to name it i would maybe call it something like just resource management or production or that kind of thing because that to me yeah. fits better but again semantics um it's interesting that they talked about the layout of the space and things like that because i think you could also mm. make the argument that as we've said it could be spatial reasoning because it's about how do we set our production up with this limited amount of space yeah so they do kind of touch on that they say that um they intention they do say that they intentionally supply the user with unlimited like amounts of resource uh because so like the forests don't disappear over time or anything um to try and and they say that i think that they're trying to argue here that that pushes it towards building and maybe away from any different dynamics it's Okay, so do so. Where so? Okay, what what would a good be required for this uh, core dynamic? Um, do we think the mechanics support it? So good would be a clear core dynamic that suits the theme of the game and is well supported by the primary mechanics and mostly appropriate audio visual choices. And although maybe they haven't articulated their core dynamic perfectly, I think that it does fit that. I think so. Yes, yeah, certainly. So what would they require for an excellent? Uh, so excellent would be a clear core dynamic that suits the theme of the game and is well supported by an integrated set of mechanics and appropriate audio visual choices and i think it's sort of getting towards that i'm not yeah. sure it reaches it fully again because of the sort of the integrated set of mechanics and things like that like to really well I, I think again going back to the like the worker placement um I think that that in particular, like, doesn't it doesn't go against the dynamic, but the whole worker placement doesn't really support the building. It's it's adjacent to it and it's fine, but it doesn't like it help with it so much. Well, that's it. If we look at it in terms of sort of building a supply chain or a production chain, then it, it yeah. does fit with it. But it's that there's possibly a lack of other mechanics that sort of fundamentally um, drives it. So, for example, yeah. like, like I've talked about before, like uh, production chains with multiple. Uh, sources and things like that so something that requires wood yeah, and yeah. stone or whatever um like a trebuchet <laughs> uh, or or a forge for example um yes um but yeah i think a better example i would say perhaps between good and excellent then for this uh yeah i think i'd be happy with that where is that here we are okay and lastly the the feedback that they were given and how how they responded to it right so the feedback um yes. okay so um this is um all about scope so they were saying that the main thing was keep it simple think about the scope you need and what the minimum viable product is uh, and also to not waste too much time trying to make it look really pretty so what they've said is that they they looked at the kind of list of things they wanted to implement and broke them up into the core things um and the extensions they could do if they had extra time uh, and then they also limited themselves to an hour of searching for like of actually looking for the graphical assets okay um and to use kind of relatively simple rough templates if they couldn't find appropriate assets um which so, to be fair it looks like they did find appropriate assets for everything like that's the thing. it looks like it's yeah like i i would say the assets um, work really nicely together um and so they say that uh ooh. so they yeah and talking about the minimal viable product they focused on um looking at the core features and making a good vertical slice rather than getting everything implemented a bit so, uh, no sorry that's not the getting like a few things fully explored so which again i think they've achieved yeah it'd be nice to know in more detail exactly sort of what features they they perhaps cut because i know i've said a couple of times so like the complex... they do actually have that okay um so they have here um they've listed the features they put in the like as the core features um 
and they say which additional features they've managed to implement and then they say that the um extent the stuff they didn't manage to get done that was in the extensions but they didn't have time to do is the animation of villagers walking on the paths okay. um, combining the building process so like planks and iron making a sword and having multiple potential recipes per factory so you could have the uh, same okay. thing producing different things so both it's... of which are things we said would be nice for them to add so but again so yes, that's a good sign so we, we've talked about sort of during the course of uh, this coursework like you know it, it's supposed to be a relatively small scoped thing and if you don't yeah. have time to fully implement a feature don't include it so it's better to have a yeah. limited set of features that work really well together than a half finished one and i think they've definitely accomplished that so i will say they've they've yeah. made successful changes there like it's a shame perhaps they didn't like i say if they didn't have time to get the sort of animation of the villagers going to and fro than just an icon showing how many were in a certain location yeah but otherwise i think they've made relatively successful changes so uh, what would a good on the mark scheme be so good would be the feedback was articulated and reasonable changes have been successfully made which yeah i yeah. think they've hit yeah um to get excellent it would have to be that feedback was clearly articulated interpreted and the reasonable changes have been successfully made and i think they might be edging towards that again again sort of like for the interpretation yeah. thing it would be <clears throat> nice to see sort of a case of okay we don't have time to fully implement this feature so we'll you know scale it back to do this particular thing rather than just cutting it entirely yeah. but otherwise yeah i think that was i think i think that's where they hit mm. sorry um yeah I, I certainly think like reading through this they've articulated and uh it very well and it's, it's very clear what they're doing and why they're doing it um but yeah maybe there could have been slightly better ways to respond to that. So, like, halfway between good and excellent? Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. And with that, let's move on to the next game. All right, and this is Grappling Greg. So, uh, looks like we've got a level select. Um, I think we'll just jump in and hit play. I, I recognize this asset pack. Okay, so we've got oh, yes. A and D. Um, we've got a timer that's ticking down, and we've only got 20 seconds to get to wherever we're going. I guess we better be fast, then. Oh, that's a steep hill. It is. Okay, so introducing concepts one at a time. Lovely little jump noise, that's kind of nice. Very sort of springy boing. Uh, we fall down that. There's a treasure. I'm assuming that's the end of the level because I can't see where else to go. But yeah, it does It does just uh, make us lose on the very first level if we don't get there yeah. in 30 seconds. That timer is maybe a little bit uh, a little bit harsh. Yeah, I would maybe introduce that in a in a later level once the player is got an idea of how everything works but you know um cool so this looks like it's going to be an interesting little platform again okay little warning of infinite drop yeah i hit menu not retry um oh no oh I'm back here again okay uh so yeah let's i guess let's get right into it let's talk about the okay. the quality and the overall presentation so um, for this, a good would be clear information is shown clearly, graphics are consistent, and appropriate use of audio. So, sounds like there's appropriate use of audio. Yep, the, the jump's good, there's some, some slightly relaxing music in the background. I'm not sure that necessarily mm. fits like the, the, the time pressure that we're under. Um, but otherwise, like the graphics in particular are very, like, are very consistent, they're very clear. Obviously yeah. they're all from a particular guess... asset pack, but... Ooh. Oh right, I guess we're gonna grapple. Yeah, laser. Oh, it's, it's a grapple. That makes sense. Um, I guess the one issue I would have with it so far is um, the fact that at the end of the level there's like a chest. It's not the the strangest choice, but like normally you would have some kind of like a flag or a door type thing. Um, so it feels like that's more of like a bonus collectible than the actual goal of the level. Yeah, but again, it's like tutorialized, right? So the fact that yes. in the very first level we get that and then we win, they they've taught us that that's what that thing represents. So yeah, maybe not like your go-to choice, yeah. but it works fine. Like, yeah, they might not be taking advantage of uh, like kind of inbuilt ideas of what the goal would be, but they do explain that. So yeah, it is fine. All right. Um. So I think that Speed so far at least. One. 
It um, that definitely counts as good. You know, the little warning triangles are a good way of indicating there's danger. Um, I like the fact that you go behind some of the bushes. It's... Yeah, it's that's, kind of a, nice um, that's a nice touch. So to get up to an excellent, um, it would require that key information is shown clearly, uh, consistent and appealing graphics, and good use of audio. Um, so, so I'm, yeah, I'm struggling to think of what else they could add to, um, to like really make it an excellent category of that. Uh, possibly slightly more signposting here, for example, of exactly yeah. what the intended path is. I'm assuming it's the side where the grass is, but given that everything they've just taught me, I feel like I can. Well, maybe it is this way. Hmm. So I think on this count, yeah, there's kind of two things I would say. Is you said that the music was quite relaxing. Yeah. And I don't think that fits with this kind of time pressure, as you said. It doesn't really fit with the time pressure. And the other thing is that the, um, I think the appearance of the grapple kind of clashes with everything else. It does a little like, bit. Like, it's not horrific, but it does clash a little bit, which well, I think stops it from being excellent. That said, it is nice and obvious like when, I mean, well, not hugely obvious, but now that I've seen it, I've worked out that red means it's not grappled onto something, blue means it safety has, so that is good as well. But you're right, it does, it doesn't necessarily fit with the overall aesthetic. Um, okay, so uh, perhaps part way between a good and, ex and an excellent? Yeah, I think that fits. Alright, lovely. So, um, gameplay. Gameplay wise. Uh, so again, with this, uh, good would be a set of complementary mechanics, smooth, usable controls uh, that lead to meaningful play. So how smooth are the controls? So as much as it looks like I'm struggling, the controls actually yeah, <laughs> do feel pretty nice. So the previous level, uh, certainly I felt that I was getting through it quite well by sort of like swing and leap, swing and leap, sort of almost a Spider-Man-esque vibe. Um, but yeah, the rest of the controls work like pretty nicely, I think. Um, in terms of the mechanics on display, we've got obviously moving and jumping, and the grapple. Uh, we've got spikes, we've got uh, pits, we've got the timer. I'm not sure where I'm meant to go from here. You're just a leap of faith. Oh, don't, don't, no, like, yeah. don't like that. Uh... <laughs> yeah, that could have been maybe signposted a bit better. Um... Don't have any so checkpoints, I guess, uh, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but I guess that's more a level design thing. So, yeah. So, what would a good for the gameplay be? So, meaningful play and all that. Yeah. So, the, a good is a set of complementary mechanics, smooth controls, and meaningful play. Um, and I guess, like here, it's hard to tell, but yeah, I think this is like an alternate route you can take. So that the fact that they've got this kind of you, if you want to, you can try and do something that's maybe more difficult. To get, to get a quicker path. So that's exactly what I was just about to bring up. And I think this is... So the fact that it's there is good. The fact that it's not yeah. super well signposted is less good, but that's maybe to do with the, yeah. the design of the level itself. And I mean, particularly with this kind of... Um, like Actually, I'm not sure that's meant to be an Visual aesthetic route. in the game, uh, with this game, that is probably the kind of thing you could get away with having a literal signpost, like a yeah. cartoony signpost floating in the air. Um, um, like just two different arrows pointing in different directions. Well, that's the thing. I'm not um, convinced it's meant to be an alternate route. I think I may be just sneaking through this way. But you know, then again, maybe they did intend for that. Um, okay. Um, I guess so. There is definitely um, the mechanics are definitely all complementary. I will say, uh, controls-wise, there doesn't it doesn't feel like there's necessarily conservation of momentum when I'm swinging. So if I'm if I'm running quite fast, in fact, I'll see if yeah. I can demonstrate it down here, or I guess on this one, if I if I'm running quite fast and jump, I feel like I slow down when right. I grapple. Yeah. Um. But I think it probably fits good. I think it definitely fits good. So, to get up to excellent, yeah, they would need a wide set of complementary mechanics, intuitive and smooth controls that lead to enjoyable and meaningful play. 
And I think for me the sticking point there is the wide set of mechanics, because I just I'm not sure that there is enough there. I at this stage I think I agree with you. Maybe we'll see some more later. But I think also the controls of the the grappling thing, the fact that sort of like you slow down and there doesn't seem to be a way to build up momentum here is yeah. is very not intuitive. It's unintuitive, that's the word I'm looking for. Um I wonder if if you go to the level select screen, do you reckon we Oh that's a good idea, yeah. Let's skip the level. Just so that we can get a quick sneak peek at yeah. the advanced mechanics. Uh Yes. Yeah, this will go fine. Okay. That, that, that went fine. Um <laughs> May have been a tad ambitious. <laughs> um, okay, so let's. Yeah, this seems like what you're supposed to do is go underneath that, like swing across. But the fact it kills your momentum when you're swinging kind of works against that. Okay. And so it, it looks the... like there isn't anything new. It's just you know combining the existing mechanics in more Chal difficult ways. Yeah, exactly. Which is good. It um, is. Like so lit reckon, literally, we are saying this is good. Gotten good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bugs. Uh, Haven't really noticed any. Yeah, I don't think we've seen any bugs. Like, given that we're complaining about the momentum thing as an aspect of the controls, I, I don't think it's fair to say that that's a bug. Yeah. Um, so, for this, uh, if there are no bugs, excellent would be the game is playable and reasonably complex, there are no obvious bugs. The question is, is it complex enough? Um, I, to get that. I would say yes. Like, in terms of just uh so I know we're talking about so, like, go ahead. I think I would disagree because like, so if you remove the grapple um, this would be a pretty like, a fairly standard platformer uh, with, you know, jumping, there's spikes and pits, and there's a timer. And I'm not sure that, like, although the grapple is uh, a nice addition to that kind of formula, I'm not sure that it count would... I, I'm not sure it's uh, complex enough to get excellent. Okay, I, in that case, let's put it between the two. Okay. Okay, so next we're looking at how well they met the brief. So first of all, the level design. Um, overall, I think like the level is design is okay. It shows definitely you know ascendant pacing and all of that. Yeah. Like, sometimes it's not super obvious where we're meant to be going, and some of those jumps are a little bit unforgiving. But otherwise, I yes. think it's pretty good. Um, yeah. So for this, good would be a sensible level design that demonstrates a number of mechanics with good pacing and some clear goals, risks, and rewards. So. And I don't think it would get higher than that. Yeah, so partly because you know you get those points where you don't know where you're supposed to be going. Yeah, and I think also the goals, risks, and rewards. While we sort of spoken about, you know, sort of art, like there are kind of multiple paths through these levels just by dint of the mechanics that are available. So like there are some blocks and there's a grapple, and it's a case of which one do you try and grapple onto. There's not sort of necessarily clearly designed alternate routes that are more rewarding or risky than others, but otherwise. Yeah, I think I think we say it's good. Okay. Could you? I guess could you argue that like maybe there isn't if there isn't really any uh, risk or reward? Would you maybe argue it's less than good? No, no. I I would say it's okay. it definitely is because like I say there are those multiple paths. They may not have designed explicitly different routes, but just through the mechanics that they've designed and the way they've yeah. set out the blocks and the levels, you can navigate it in multiple ways. Okay, um, so tutorial design, which is the other part of the brief section. So, hang on, let me just come back to that quickly to clarify what I mean. If they didn't have the timer and there wasn't that pressure to get through the level, like in a like at a certain pace, I would agree that yes. maybe maybe there isn't that risk reward. But because they've got a way of sort of saying, you know, like this is our risk basically. Right. So I guess. I mean, even if they don't have like explicitly different paths in the level, like taking this bit here, um, then you know, as we've seen, it's quite easy to fall off and have to restart. 
So that in itself then means like you know you can take it slower and be more more, more careful. Yeah, exactly. Which you know means taking the riskier path of gotta go fast is yeah. rewarded. So exactly. okay, yeah, all right. Um, okay, so yeah, carrying on. <laughs> tutorial design. So for a good in this, they would need a mostly integrated tutorial that communicates most of the goals, risks, and rewards through level design. Uh, that introduces information and mechanics in a logical way that fits with what has gone before. And yeah. um, so, we, like our first level is just here are the basic controls. Here is the goal. Yeah. It's, it's like arguably, as we said before, maybe the timer there is a little bit, um, might be a little bit much. Yeah, it might have been a better idea to leave that till this level. Yeah. Um, but. But then you do again hit you've got the two types of danger introduced one after another and then the grapple so i love that little drawing for some reason i don't know why it's just very <laughs> cute um but yeah i think actually they do a really good job of tutorializing the mechanics yeah like weird okay, so i think it definitely fits with good so this bit i don't know whether it's kind of intentional because i don't yeah. feel that you necessarily need to go down but it almost sort of unintentionally teaches you that like, you know, you you will swing if you um, grapple at an angle. Oh, yeah, I found a and I guess path. even if you don't learn it from that, this next obstacle requires you to swing over it. So... Uh, and so do some of the previous ones, really. But uh, yeah, okay, so I, I would say it definitely meets that. Okay, so for excellent, it would need an integrated tutorial that communicates goals, risks, and rewards through level design, and that introduces information and mechanics in a logical way that builds on what has gone before. Uh, so, I guess the question is, does it... Do these little tutorial bits build on what's happened before? And I think they kind of do, right? They increase the complex... So, first of all, it was just, like, here's a pit, swing over it. And then yeah. the next bit is, effectively like you're on the underside of one of these so you've got to like swing and release swing and release swing and release so they build the complexity in that way so yeah i think they do they teach yeah. you they teach you how they teach you the like they teach you the button to press to use the grapple and then they slowly teach you how to actually use the grapple yeah okay um i think i'm happy with that as well uh so to get up to prize worthy um, they would need a fully integrated tutorial that successfully communicates goals, risks, and rewards through level design, and that introduces information mechanics in a novel yet logical way that builds on and reinterprets what has gone before. Um, and I don't think they've reached that point. Yeah, but I think I think we definitely say that it's excellent. Yeah. So the okay, next so the next excellent. bit will be their core dynamic. Um, yes. So what do they think? I guess is the f the fun bit of their game, sort of the key thing. So. Um, they've said that the core dynamic is race to the end, which, okay. yeah, I agree with. So, th yep, this definitely could have gone one of two ways. They could have said spatial reasoning, and I would have disagreed with them because because they've had added this clock mechanic. It's all yeah. of, it's it is about getting through the space, but it's about getting through the space as fast as possible. Yeah. Um, so yeah, f fully agree with that. Um, I. Given the grappling mechanic, uh, sorry. So I was going to say, like the grappling mechanic to me kind of speaks to more of a, a spatial reasoning because it's all about how do I fling myself through it. But again, even that, like you can sort of use to, I mean, not quite speed run the level, but to to use like quicker paths and things like that. So it still yeah. like, helps underline that dynamic. So yeah. So and what, I guess even though there is, you know, there are spatial reasoning elements that kind of contributes to the race to the end dynamic because it's it's about using the spatial reasoning to work out the fastest route yeah exactly sort of like what you were saying before like the do you take it slow and careful or do you make a break for it uh, this okay. is a very difficult section <laughs> oh, yeah, I... um Okay, oh, so no. for this, a good would be a clear core dynamic that suits the theme of the game and is well supported by the primary mechanics and mostly appropriate audio-visual choices. Mm. Which... So, 
So as you mentioned earlier, uh, at least I think this was this game, the, the music. music choice maybe does not support that dynamic. I would 100% agree, which I think is a shame. Like, it needs to be a slightly faster paced thing, like, to get the sort of truly excellent or even prize-worthy levels. I'd say even maybe yeah. some sort of adaptive music that, like, you know, it just it changes the track when you get 10 seconds away from the end to sort of really yeah. hone, hone, hone that sort of uh, panicked feeling. Um, mm. But everything I else, I would say... Maybe go a step further and argue, like, I don't think this is a particularly strong argument, but you could make the argument that this, like, the, the visual design, because of how kind of uh, cartoony and relaxed, like, it's almost like it's kind of a relaxing kind of art style, that maybe is counter to it. The art I don't I'd, think I'd, it's a huge issue, but... I'll disagree with the art style, but I will say I think they've chosen the music to match the art style rather than the gameplay. Right. Um, but okay, Dis discounting the audio just for this bit. Uh, yes. Um, do we think it hits everything else? So yeah, I think the core dynamic is clear, and I think the the mechanics all um, definitely support it. Like really, it's just the music choice. I think is the only okay. actual problem with this. So I guess the question is, do we think the other elements of that are oh. sufficient to uplift them to the next level? regardless uh, of the music, or I guess to, to give them that level regardless of the music. So what Having we... thought about it, actually, I might... You could argue that, uh, particularly with the later levels, when how kind of awkward and difficult the platforming becomes, that that kind of pushes it more towards spatial reasoning, because it's so difficult to go quickly through it. Um, um, perhaps. But again, that might just be the case of, you know, there's a difficulty gov as you get better with this you'll be able to do those quickly i mean i'm certainly getting through this bit quicker than i used to so i yeah i think that's probably the case okay um, so uh so yeah what what would an excellent be for this sorry what would an excellent be for this uh, so excellent would be a clear core dynamic that suits the theme of the game and is supported by an integrated set of mechanics and appropriate audio visual choices um, and so given that one of the two distinctions between good and excellent is the difference between mostly appropriate audiovisual and appropriate audiovisual, I th think the music keeps it in good. Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, so let's say that it's good, and let's talk okay. about the feedback they were given and how they responded to it. Yes. Uh, so, um... So first piece of feedback is that um, with their original demo uh, they had a really good strong core dynamic and they were on the right lines and they asked about some additional things they were considering adding so like one thing they said was they wanted to try and add some collectible coins or something like that that maybe are scattered around for the player to go for for more points um, but we're advised probably weaken the race to the end things uh, side of things and so they decided to nah. yes i i would definitely say you know again if you'd scattered some stars through that level and tied the score to that then it makes it feel much more spatial reasoning because it's a case of can you navigate this space to get all of the different um stars or whatever but if they'd made for example um those collectibles like timers or something like that something to give you just a little bit of extra time that could have still played into it perhaps but you're right, it's it's yes. It's tricky sort of I guess there are ways that could have worked. Uh, so they so they do have some other feedback. Um so apparently they were told that um like they had a good core set of mechanics and it was important to not go like too overboard by throwing lots and lots of stuff at the player. Um and so they were considering they had been considering adding options like sprinting and crouching. Ooh. Sorry, um, I've, I've just noticed but here. Decided ultimately that it those were necessary, and it would have maybe given too much for the player uh, to deal with. So one thing I'm going to throw out there is this looks like a very clearly designed choice, and it's kind of nice yes. that they signposted it with "there's no grass on this bit; it's all sort of horrible, dirty, and spikes." And this way is all the there grass is a literal flower. flower. Yeah, still, no, still so spikes. I but good Fewer to see. Of them. Yeah. Oh, I've only got Ooh, nine seconds. Not much time. Okay. Um, uh, but yeah, sorry, you were saying about the feedback. Yeah. 
Uh, and so they decided not to add stuff like sprinting and crouching because they didn't. They decided it wouldn't add as much to the gameplay as it would to the kind of cognitive load of the player. I agree. Um, but then when talking about the idea of a grappling hook, um, they decided that, you know, that added enough to the gameplay that it was probably worth the additional work, which is definitely correct. F fully agree, yeah. If this was just a, you know, slightly typical platformer of you've got to jump between the platforms i'd say you know yeah it's fine i guess with the grapple hook it adds just enough that yeah it adds a, 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 it gives them a lot more interesting things they can do with the level design which is what we were asking them to showcase yes and given that they titled the game grappling greg i think they have definitely uh they, they definitely understand that <laughs> um yeah so on the mark scheme uh for the feedback, good would be that feedback was articulated and reasonable changes have been successfully made, which, yeah, I think they've, they've, they've done. I agree, yeah. Um, um, so what would it take to take this up to excellent? Yeah, so excellent would be that the feedback was clearly articulated, interpreted, and reasonable changes have been successfully made. So... Again, it comes down to that sort of interpretation of it. Yeah. And from the sounds of it, they've sort of said, well, we decided not to include some extra mechanics and things like that. Yeah. And focus on the grappling hook. But I think it would have been nice for to for them to talk about sort of exactly ha given given that they were focusing on the grappling hook as sort of the main mechanic that they were going to rely on. How did that yes. how did that change the game? So how did they or the development of it? So did they um Yeah. So, like, like, reading through this, it does, the feedback section does very much feel like, you know, we, we suggested this and were told it probably wouldn't work the way we presented it, so we didn't do it. And we were told these things would work, so we did. There's not, there's not much, like, considering the reasoning behind things, maybe trying to adapt ideas. Yeah. Which, like, you know, which is, like, fine. It's, it is a good. It's a, yes. uh, like, we were told to do these things, so we did them. But it doesn't it's necessarily definitely show. definitely good. It doesn't show sort of how they sort of went. Okay, given that the grappling hook is our main thing, how do we adapt our levels to to deal with that kind of thing? So, okay, so we we saying that's good. Yes. Okay, and uh, I believe that is our last game for this batch. Uh, in yes. which case, uh, we we will see you again another time for another video. Bye bye. bye.